Hello everybody, my name is Milan Stepanov. I welcome you to our today's webinar on the CC1120 performance line from TI, the industry highest performing sub 1 gigahertz RF parts. The CC1120 high performance line will feature three different devices. The highest performing one is named CC1120 and will feature 12.5 kHz channel spacing as well as 65 dB adjacent channel selectivity. The CC1121 will be the second device in the family and will feature 50 kHz minimum channel spacing and up to 57 dB adjacent or alternative channel selectivity. Due to its broader receive filter bandwidth, the sensitivity will be somewhat lower than the CC1120, namely up to minus 120 dBm at 1.2 kilobit per second. The third device in this family is the CC1175. This is a transmit-only device with very narrow band 6.25 kHz channel spacing and extremely good phase noise performance. The CC1120 family benefits are multiple. First of all, they deliver industry-leading RF blocking and selectivity performance with 65 dB adjacent channel rejection at 169 MHz, for example, as well as 90 dB blocking performance. The outstanding link budget of the new family of totally 139 dB is available immediately for testing after unpacking the development kit. Another unique feature of the new family is the so-called advanced channel sniff mode. With this feature, the CC1120 family of devices is able to achieve an average of less than 3 mA received current consumption, depending on the used modulation and data rate and preamble. What is RF performance and why is it so important? Obviously, the CC1120 device line is called performance line because of its high RF performance. That includes sensitivity, output power, selectivity and blocking performance. Let's see how this works in a real world scenario. In an ideal world, the communication range is dependent on the so-called link budget. The link budget includes the transmit output power, the receive sensitivity, and also the antenna gain. In order to increase the communication range of an RF system, we can either increase the output power or improve the receive sensitivity. In case of the output power, mostly we are limited by RF regulations, for example, the Etsy or FCC in US. The problem with this scenario is that in the real world, it will not be realistic. In a real-world scenario, we have to cope with uh, different interference sources, like shown here. Meaning that all these new RF-enabled devices like smart meters, wireless cameras, wireless audio or 3G phones will operate in a frequency which is nearby our system. To be able to cope with all this RF interference, which will definitely increase in the near future, we need to have a high selectivity and blocking performance. And this has been the most important feature which we have put our efforts on during the design phase. So the RF performance line has the highest selectivity and blocking performance on the market today. On the left-hand side, you see the very high, steep receive filter response curve of the 1120 device. Usually, a receive signal shown in green will be to a specific level above the noise floor which we can see at the bottom as a gray zone. As long as there is no interference, both devices will receive the signal OK. The problem comes when we have an interference signal close to our channel. You can see that on the right-hand side, a small signal interference will already disturb the communication and the competitor device will be blocked by this interferer. Due to the highest RF selectivity on the market, the 1120 will be able to receive the signal in the same situation. What will happen if we increase the interference signal? With 30 dB higher interference, the 1120 is still able to keep communication ongoing. The competitor device is completely blocked. This is another way to compare the performance of CC1120, the typical competitor. On the upper half of the slide, we can see that an interfere here in yellow will be disturbing the communication even if it's further away from the competitor RFIC. In the case of CC1120 communication link, 
shown at the bottom of the slide, we can see that the interferer in yellow could be much closer to the 1120 and still we can keep the link running without losing packets. Let's have a look at the new highly differentiating features of the performance line. The first unique feature of the performance line is the new sync detection method. Traditionally, all RF devices use a bit demodulator to generate a bit stream and perform bit timing recovery, frequency offset compensation and data rate offset recovery. To achieve this, packets are being transmitted with different preamble length, which is typically a sequence of zero and ones. This preamble will allow the bit demodulator to settle accurately and as such represents the limiting factor for receive sensitivity and robustness. All existing RF devices use the traditional method to detect the sync pattern. This is done by looking in the hard decision data in the demodulator based on the input signal. In a real-world scenario, we may have also a noise signal being input to the demodulator. As such signal is processed, there is a high probability of false sync detection. This could happen even in the range of milliseconds or more often seconds. TI has developed a new advanced sync detection method within the CC1120 performance line. The main features of it are increased sensitivity and increased robustness compared to the traditional solution. The main differentiation is the usage of signal processing which allows us to detect very reliably the sync pattern. There are numerous benefits to this technology. We can achieve ultra-high sensitivity down to minus 127 dBm to 1.2 kilobits per second. The new advancing detection mechanism is a highly differentiated feature which will be very useful in mass deployments in the field. Another interesting feature introduced within the performance line is the so-called channel sniff mode. In this mode, the device is programmed by the user to autonomously check the channel for RF activity. In the channel sniff mode, the CC1120 device maintains the range, its robustness to interference and also its receive sensitivity. The activation of the sniff mode is done by programming the device by the user. Once correctly set up, the channel sniff mode will continue operating until it's deactivated. Channel sniff mode is a way to cycle the receiver between sleep and receive mode. Depending on the protocol used, there will be a different length of preamble. TI's RF performance line also introduces a new evaluation platform for all TI transceivers. The new platform is called TRX Evaluation Board, TRX EB, and is based on the MSP430 ultra low power microcontroller. The TRX EB boards come preloaded with the packet error rate test software from TI. This software provides an extensive user experience and allows customers to conduct various tests out of the box. Another free tool from TI is the so-called packet sniffer PC software. This can be found on the TI CC1120 product side and can be used to visualize RF packets being transmitted over the air. There are multiple target markets and applications where the RF performance line will excel. Here you can see some of those with wireless metering and home and building automation probably being the most important ones. The smart metering market is evolving very quickly on a worldwide perspective. Smart meters include e-meters, gas meters, water and heat meters and in Europe there is a huge market for the so-called heat cost allocators. The so-called wireless embus market is predominantly European standard. The wireless embus standard or so-called EN13757-4 has been around for several years. In the last years we have seen strong increase in wireless embus protocol on the smart metering market in Europe. The CC1120 family will support all relevant wireless embus nodes for the frequencies 169, 433 and 868 MHz. Here we have a mandatory mode which is defined as 50 kilobit per second with 2 GFSK modulation. This of course is being supported by all performance line devices by TI. The common expectation in the metering industry is that 802.15.4G will become a worldwide deployed protocol for sub-1 GHz communication. 
Of course, the CC1120 are not only suited to be used in meters, but also on the other side, the so-called data collector or AMI infrastructure products. The CC1120 can be designed then as a chipset or as a wireless module. Here is a short summary of the CC1120 performance line. The CC1125 device will be the first fully integrated RF transceiver targeted at Category 1 compliance at Etsy 300 to 20. This device will provide 65 dB adjacent channel rejection in 12.5 kHz channels and up to 90 dB blocking performance. The 3 mA receive sniff mode is a major differentiator towards computing devices and allows extremely low power consumption while maintaining the full RF performance of CC1120. The extremely high link budget of 139 dB is a guarantee for tens of kilometers line of sight range. This can be tested immediately after unpacking the CC1120 developer's kit as it comes preloaded with the test software to prove this. Another unique feature is the support for all ISM bands in sub 1 GHz area in Europe. This could be the new 169 MHz band for smart metering as well as the already existing 433 and 868 MHz for Europe. In US and other parts of the world, we do support the 915 or the 950 MHz with the RF performance line. The low phase noise of the CC1120 devices allows the usage of external high output power solutions like the TI CC1190 power amplifier. Typically such high power applications will require the usage of a saw filter between the radio and the PA. In the CC1120 case, due to its low phase noise in transmit mode, the saw filter can be eliminated. This reduces significantly the bomb cost and the complexity of the design. If you are looking for additional details or have questions to TI, please check our website or contact our online community. For the latest data sheets and technical details, please check the TI's website. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time. Bye-bye.